For those of you who don't know me, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I promised, you know, a while ago that I would not uh, put people through presentations that I don't like. And keeping in mind that this is a presentation from wireless professionals to wireless professionals, we make the content. So I made a vow years and years ago not to put people through presentations you cannot read from the back. So we're not going to see much uh, writing. Fernay Muñoz, I'm originally from Colombia. Um, I've been for about uh, 16, almost 17 years in the US. I've been working with technology for about you know, 25, 27 years, and probably the last 20 of them just fully doing IT work. The last few years doing wireless, and you know, I had the pleasure to meet uh, Mr. Keith Parsons. Um, I work for a school district in Utah, in Salt Lake City. Uh, no, the district did not pay for any of this, uh, you know, just a long story on that, but um, it's exciting to be at these conferences. Uh, and for those of you here or out there that say, like, I ah, will just watch the videos later, the presentations, I don't know, it's 30, 40 percent of what you learn and what you share here. You, if you come to the uh, conference, you'll have the opportunity to have lunch with book authors, you know, like Dave Coleman in the house, and, and then you have CW in his left and right, you have Kit Parsons, you have Scott, you have all these people that you can share with, and um, yes, <clears throat> sorry if I'm clearing my throat a lot, that time that you spend with them outside of this, that sometimes where you learn the most, and you get those opportunities. I'm CWNA number Actually, they don't have numbers. Nobody cares about a CWNA. Just like, no, CWNEs, those are the only ones we give numbers to. But it's the first step. And if you're not certified, get certified. If you're working towards your next certification, do it. Took me, it took me only like four years to get my CWNA. Yeah, it sounds like pretty bad. But, you know, raising kids and having a family, a full-time job and side jobs and all that, it takes time. And it's difficult to make time to, uh, to study, but there is always an excuse to not study and not get certified. So go ahead and do it. I do have a blog with one posting, but I have a blog. <laughs> it's uh, the white 5 things.com. Hopefully I'll, I'll start posting more. But again, you know, it's the same excuse that you know, I have kids and I have a family and a job and all this. So. Um, through all of this uh, process of uh, getting to know wireless and get started, uh, I decided to uh, volunteer myself towards, uh, so do some testing. Um, so one of those was the RF measurement tools. These are the, uh, what I use. I'm just here, I'm not here to tell you how RF attenuates and how it works. That's Miko and all these guys that know uh, in depth uh, the, the details. But, I'm just going to share with you uh, a testing I did, and I know as you look to the list, you know, there's like, yeah, computer, tape measure, masking tape, table, it sounds like I'm going to tape somebody to a table and torture him, but it's not about that. Um, I'll show you in detail kind of like what I did. Time is there is not a tool or a device, it's more of a resource that we just have to uh, make everything work around that. So I started the testings, and I start growing frustrated, and I called the master, uh, and I have uh, one of the minions, well, he actually works with, the, with, with us at the district now, helping me, you know, set up things, and, and then I'm frustrated, and I called the master, and he's like, Mr. Parsons, uh, I'm doing the testing, but it's not working. He's like, what do you mean it's not working? He's like, yeah, I'm standing right here in the same place, I'm not moving, and it's all over the place, neck 21, 25, 22, 26, 21, 25, it's broken, something's wrong, it's like, yeah, that's normal. I'm like, but, but how can that be normal? And he explained last night, you know, how his, our second uh, test that we had for uh, the stress test couldn't be done because it was just hard to measure one thing uh, and get exact same results just a second later. So I decided to just move on to, okay, I'm going to, because it's true, if you're holding a link sprint, uh, uh, an air check in your hands, and you're just certain distance from your AP, and you breathe, and you move, and you switch hands because you're tired, it's different. And just short distances will make a huge difference when you're testing. And John, in your presentation, John around, uh, he explained he had to measure things like 10 times 
and just get an average because there's just no way around it. If you think that if somebody makes a test and you're going to use that data and be good, it's not going to be accurate because it changes all the time. And whatever test you're doing, it's going to be different from one that was done a minute before. So that's why I encourage you to do some of this. Some of this looks simple. This is just simple. It just takes time and some, some gear. And yes, you have Twitter. You can just get online and ask questions. And, but do your own test and kind of get an idea. That's why you have to know your losses, kind of see what you're up against. Um, if you're, doing, if you're doing some measurements with an AP on a stick, then yeah, you have to measure the distance from where you are to where it is the height. And then if you move away that distance, and then of course it's not gonna be, it's really easy to make a mistake because if the AP is two meters up high and you are two meters out here, then you're not two meters from the AP. You know, you, you get the hypotenuse and then you do a square root of the, uh, of the square of the side, of the sum of the square of the sides. And then you're actually almost three meters from the AP, not two. And as I'll show you with some graphs, any little distance matters. So using tables and the tape, just having exact distances, of course, the table has certain length, and then you just, you just figure out your environment, whatever you are. Uh, the tables work for me because when you're holding it, it changes. When you leave it on the table, then you can just look at it Get an average, because you're not, it's, that thing is not going to sit in one place still. It just moves, goes up and down. That's normal. I learned the hard way. Um, what you really need for a test like this, and that's how you would measure walls as well, is just an RF source uh, and a source of power for the RF source, because I believe an AP with no power is not considered an RF source. It's, it's an, just an AP. Um, I used yeah, a switch and I used uh, a POE switch and, and you know, some of the guys that do AP on the stick, they carry a battery and they have wheels and they have you know, a strap, a backpack. There are many ways in the environment I was, it was okay. Uh, we tend to use you know, a little one, a pocket uh, size AP. And then there are some uh, USB power sources that you can fit both you know, in any little space. Uh, a device to measure, you, uh, there is a big uh, uh, controversy, you call it uh, RSSI, or you call it uh, DBM, or, or, or power level, or DBM level. Um, yeah, there's not a defined metric for, for you know, RSSI against you know, something, it's not like a value. And depending on the devices you're using, if your computer says like, yeah, the signal level is 50%, it's 50% of what? If you are measuring uh, uh, with certain devices that are special for that, they'll give you more, more accurate readings. So let's get to some data. I started outside, outdoors, no walls, no nothing. And yeah, it kind of looks pretty straight, but it's not accurate because I, wanted, I was interested in that first meter. And as you can see, these values, they're not equally distributed because these are just 20 centimeters from the AP and 40 and 60 and then one meter. So what I did is I broke it into pieces. So that is just making one to 10 meters in one meter increments. And then, yeah, it kind of follows what we're familiar with, but uh, some people, they have this beautiful curve, just perfect. It's not like that. It, of the many, 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 many tests in many different places that we did, we could never find that perfect, beautiful shaped curve. So that's why these testings will tell us uh, accurate readings. This is what happens in the first meter. So that's why if you're testing, that's why they recommend, the experts recommend just put things at least a meter apart. If you have two things right next to each other and then you have, for one, yeah, it, it's data, but it's probably not going to be real world. It's not going to be uh, very accurate. This is just uh, out of whack. It, it, numbers are all over the place. You have to average. When I presented this, Mr. Parsons, like, well, well, what's that little bump there? It's just like, well, that's what I read at that specific time in that specific environment where I was. And that is uh, indoors and you have multi paths so what you're reading is signals coming from the floor, from up, from the side, from everywhere, so that's gonna give you averages that just measure differently. 
Um, this uh, would be the uh, one with an AP 1.2 meters from a wall. So, um, kind of the same thing as the other one. I had all these measurements and I broke them into pieces. Um, the, uh, the interesting thing is that the curve kind of follows the same shape regardless of where you are. If you're indoors, if you're outdoors, if you have an AP you know, near the wall or far away from the wall. But pay attention to this one here. The, uh, you cannot see, uh, okay, I broke my promise of not presenting these type of things you cannot read, but you'll have the presentation, and basically what it, what it has is you have the AP that is uh, w less than one meter from the wall. So you're on the wall, you put the AP here. Then you measure with it, right there, and then you go to the other side of the wall. So we are, unless you have like a really, really thick wall, you are within a meter of your AP. So if you put your AP there and go to right to the other side, on the right on the other side of the wall, we're at neck 22. So we have that huge loss, and it's like, are you sure this wall is 9 dBs or 12 dBs or whatever you get in your specific environment? And it's not really accurate, because even in free space, that first meter, you lose 15, 20 dBs. So what you have to do is just put it away from the wall and just measure multiple times and then go to the other side of the wall and you'll see, uh, like in this one, you have the AP about five meters from the wall. Then you start measuring from the AP, let's say it's in that table, and you start measuring, 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 then you measure right before the wall and then right on the other side of the wall, it kind of goes, it's consistent because next to the wall with the AP in the same room, I got about 34, and then right on the other side, and again, try to keep those lines straight. Because if you have the AP here, and then you walk around the side, and then you end up on this side, you're not four meters from the wall anymore. You're more than that. So <clears throat> that gave me about you know, three dB loss in that, in that case. So that would tell me that wall is three dB loss. Of course, the... Um, the experts, these guys have spent thousands of hours, and, and as I was doing this, I was like, I appreciate bloggers and all these people that spend hours and hours and hours doing all this testing. It takes time. Something as simple as this, I don't know how many hours I spent, but that's what it takes. And all of this data will help us, and yes, even in long distance, because I said, well, I'm already here, let's just measure four meters more. Yeah, it kind of goes there. But this first meter is what you have to watch out for. Um, so in summary, tools and devices in the environment, they will vary. Just make sure, because uh, as, as we said last night, uh, it is um, highly volatile. So you'll get different measures and everything. And you cannot calibrate. You, you test two cars of the same vendor, and they're going to give you different measurements. So I think I'm out of time a while ago. Uh, do you want to go back two slides? Thanks, Fernay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, by the way,